Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Forgotten Favorites, the show we're doing here in August each and every day, where I'm going to be pulling out some obscurities, rarities, little talked about albums from my collection, from bands you may have never heard of before, maybe even some bands you have heard of before. So uh, today we're going to go to Germany. I'm going to go back to the 70s today, 1974. A band that only ever recorded this one album. Pretty damn good album. The name of the band is also the name of the album. Spectacle. Okay, that is spelled S as in Sam, P as in Peter, E, K as in Ken, T as in Tom, A, K as in Ken, E, L as in Larry. Spectacle. All right, the band was comprised of Heinz Froling on guitar, mellotron, and vocals. Werner Protzner on bass and vocals. Edward Schick on drums, and Detlef Widecki on Hammond organ, Mellotron, Moog, synth, and vocals. And yes, if you were listening, you probably recognize two of the names of two of the guys in that band. That's right. Schick and Froling, who would, uh, when this band would implode, probably about a year after they, you know, put together this album and played some live dates, uh, those two guys would go on to form uh, Schick, Furs, and Froling along with another gentleman, right? And uh, most notably known as a band that utilized a ton of Mellotron in their music. Well, Spectacle kind of do the same. All right, as you can imagine, when you've got a configuration of Mellotron, Hammond organ, Moog, Rickenbacker bass, and guitar, uh, you're going to get some pretty cool sounds. So let's take a look. So first of all, the album artwork is pretty spectacular. This is the Laser's Edge issue of this, which came out in 1996. Job well done by Mr. Ken Golden and company. Um... There is, hold on a second, <clears throat> there's the band right there, all right, pretty neat, so like I said, you got Rickenbacker, you got uh, Gibson, Les Paul, you've got uh, the Moog, and Mellotron, and Hammond, nice big drum kit, and then uh, the booklet here, you've got, uh, it's upside down first, a nice little essay about the bands, track listing, who plays on it, what they play, all that good stuff. Uh, basically, this album was uh, only three songs with this reissue uh, from Laser's Edge, you get four. So it starts off with The Eternal Question, which is the kickoff track at 15 minutes and 32 seconds. Big, long, epic. The best way I can describe this band, uh, they don't sound like a lot of their kind of uh, kraut rock brethren, other German bands of the time. They incorporate more traditional British progressive rock tropes i think in their music so a lot like i said lots of mellotron really creepy mellotron so if you love like the first two king crimson albums in the court of the crimson king and in the wake of poseidon maybe even a little bit you know obviously it's right around the same time maybe a little bit after but the um lark's tongues and aspic era all right a lot of big mellotron swells uh at times you know the the rickenbacker bass is kind of looping all over the place really good dissonant guitar work uh vocal there are vocals it, they're predominantly big, long instrumental passages, but there are vocals. Uh, the Eternal Question also has some quirky, like little gentle giantisms in places. So, yeah, think of early Genesis, early King Crimson, early Gentle Giant. That's kind of like what you get here. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, Big Boss's Eyes is the next track, and that's the shortest one in the album at just under nine. Uh, that's more of like your standard prog rock song, right? It's got little elements of Gentle Giant here, a little caravan as, as well. There's like a quirky nature to Big Boss's Eyes, which is reminiscent of the Canterbury scene a little bit. But um, pretty cool. Pretty cool song. Different from the other two main tracks. And then you've got Seven Pounds Tommy, which is the big behemoth that ends the regular part of the album. Uh, 17 minutes and 34 seconds. Uh, that's again, takes you through all sorts of twists and turns. All right, Nice Rickenbacker bass on there. Lots of Mellotron and Hammond organ. Moog synthesizer. Jabbing, stabbing guitar leads all over the place. And I actually like the vocals on the album, though. They're pretty good. I think they fit the music. They're a little understated, which is kind of nice, but the voices, please, vocals are pleasing. Um, nice arrangements here, I think, on this song and even on the bonus track. Uh, the bonus track is No, No, Not You, which is a live track, 20 minutes long. Reminds me a lot of Starless Bible Black era King Crimson very improvisational in nature 
like I said, you got the 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 doom, doom, burr, burr, doom, boom, burr, burr, all the the, the Rickenbacker bass just popping all over the place, and these really kind of metallic, uh, dissonant, angular guitar leads popping in throughout with the big waves of Mellotron in the background. Uh, the Mel they're using the Mellotron in all sorts of different ways. At times, it sounds like flutes and horns, and you know, just really, really well done stuff. Uh, but that last track, uh, the bonus live track, more of like an improvisational jam. Okay. So not as structured as the other three songs, which aren't tremendously structured, but uh, definitely have a form about them and allow for lots of uh, instrumental interplay, which is pretty cool. So I don't know. I, I dig this. I remember buying this when it came out and uh, really liking it a lot. It's one of those things that, you know, I've got so many of albums, CDs like this, that uh, every now and then it's cool to go through. Uh, the shelves of the closet and saying, oh, I haven't heard that in a while. Then you put it in and you remember what you loved about it initially. So my guess is there's going to be a lot of folks out there who have never heard of this, this kind of one and done band. Uh, but if you're familiar with Schick, Furs and Froling, uh, this is kind of where that all started. So pretty notable for that. But even, like I said, even if you like early Genesis or King Crimson, and a little bit of Gentle Giant, maybe a little of Canterbury scene thrown in. This is really cool. Very different from some of the other German bands that were around at the time. So uh, pretty notable. So there you have it. Spectacle, self-titled from 1974. Check it out. Please go and uh, grab a listen to this wherever you do that. And come back and report. Let us know what you think. Uh, if you've never heard this band before, don't just say, I've never heard of these guys before. And then don't do anything with it. Come on. Go out and investigate. Uh I'm, I'm, I'm getting a I know I said it on yesterday's video as well, but uh, I'm seeing like diminishing returns on this Forgotten Favorites show. Uh, each episode is getting less and less views, and I thought we had a lot of people on the channel who wanted to, you know, learn a little bit about and go investigate some cool bands that they may have missed uh, early on or wherever. Um, but sometimes I think that people just want to hear me talk about the same bands over and over and over and over again, the, the, the big million sellers. Uh, it's kind of frustrating for me because uh, I love this rare stuff. And I know we do have fans of this stuff and who like discovering new music on the channel. But I think, unfortunately, we're probably the minority. So uh, so we'll see. So I'm going to continue doing this for, uh, you know, at least uh, the first week or two. But if I'm still seeing, you know, nobody watching these videos, I'm going to change gears and go do something else. So please tell all your fellow viewers if uh, you really want to see Forgotten Favorites continue throughout August. Uh, kind of jab everybody and say, hey, man. Pete's putting these shows on every morning. Uh, cool, new, obscure music and rarities and things. Check them out. So, all right. So, uh, thanks for watching. Visit us on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on, we're on uh, where are we? We're on uh, Facebook, Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. It's early, folks. Uh, tonight, we've got coming up, we've got the Monsters Den. Chris Allo and myself will be doing part two of our look at some cool exploitation films. And then uh, Martin Popoff, of course, back tomorrow morning at the Funhouse with myself. So stay tuned for all that and more. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Link to our Ko-Fi page uh, to make channel donations is below as well. Also, the link to our merch page, all sorts of cool Sea Tranquility merchandise. You can check out a lot of new stuff and the link to our website as well. So thanks for watching. I am Pete Pardo. See you real soon. Bye-bye.